Let's dive into how forces are transferred in fluids and how we can use Pascal's law to understand and quantify this process. Fluids, which include both liquids and gases, have a special way of transferring forces. And this ability makes them useful in many technologies and systems. First, let's talk about how forces work in fluids. When you apply a force to a fluid, that force gets distributed and transferred in all directions. This is very different from what happens when you apply a force to a solid. Imagine pressing down on a solid object like a block of wood. The force you apply stays concentrated where you push it. But when you apply force to a fluid, the fluid particles move and spread that force evenly throughout the entire fluid. This means that if you push down on water or air, the force isn't just transferred downward. It spreads out in all directions, up, down, sideways, and everywhere in between. This is a key characteristic of fluids and is what makes things like hydraulics possible. This leads us to Pascal's law, which is the principle that helps us quantify how forces are transferred in fluids. Pascal's law states that when pressure is applied to a confined fluid, that pressure is transmitted equally in all directions throughout the fluid. In other words, if you press on a fluid in a closed container, the pressure increases the same amount everywhere inside that container, not just where you applied the force. To explain Pascal's law more clearly, let's look at how pressure works. Pressure is the amount of force applied per unit area, and the formula is pressure equals force divided by area. Pascal's law tells us that when you apply pressure to a fluid, this pressure will be the same at every point within that fluid. So, if you apply a force to a small area in a fluid, that same pressure is felt throughout the entire fluid, even on larger areas. A great example of Pascal's law in action is in hydraulic systems, which are used in things like car brakes, bulldozers, and even elevators. In a hydraulic system, a small force applied to a small piston, a part that pushes on the fluid, can create a much larger force on a bigger piston. Here's how it works. When you press down on the smaller piston, the pressure you create in the fluid is transferred equally to the larger piston. Since the larger piston has a bigger surface area, the same pressure creates a larger force, allowing you to lift heavy objects with relatively little effort. Here's a simple example of how we can quantify this using Pascal's law. Let's say you have a hydraulic system with two pistons, one small and one large. If you apply a force of 10 newtons to a small piston with an area of one square centimeter, the pressure you generate is 10 newtons per square centimeter because pressure equals force divided by area. This pressure is transmitted equally throughout the fluid. Now, let's say the larger piston has an area of 10 square centimeters. The same pressure of 10 newtons per square centimeter acts on this larger piston, but because the area is larger, the total force on the large piston becomes 100 newtons. Pressure times area equals force. That means you applied a small force on the smaller piston, but the system multiplied that force on the larger piston thanks to Pascal's law. This is why you can do things like stop a speeding car with hydraulic brakes. The system uses the properties of fluids to amplify your force and do a lot of work with minimal effort. So what's the big picture? Fluids have the unique ability to transfer forces evenly in all directions. And Pascal's law helps us understand how this pressure is transmitted equally throughout a confined fluid. By using Pascal's law, we can quantify how forces are transferred in fluids and create systems like hydraulics, which amplify small forces to do big jobs. That's it for today's lesson. Next time you use something like a car jack or press the brakes in a car, Remember that fluids and Pascal's law are hard at work, transferring forces smoothly and efficiently.